morning everyone. Uh, it is uh, actually a great pleasure for me to be on the other side today. I have been uh, a teacher of English for many years and uh, since I came back to IIT, I have been uh, looking at a lot of technical papers. So, uh, I thought I would share my uh, knowledge that I have gained uh, over these years. And I have also been looking at uh, many of your papers which you have submitted during uh, uh, for this workshop. And uh, while it is not been, uh, it has not been possible for me to look at all the papers, uh, I will be uh, talking about uh, a few uh, very common uh, problems that occur, uh, a few elements that recur in almost all the papers that I have seen. Uh, and uh, I would also like to say here that most of my examples that I have taken here are from your papers. So, any resemblance to real life is deliberate as uh, Sahana put it yesterday. So, uh, I will start with talking about uh, the writing style that is uh, necessary for uh, technical paper. Uh, there are uh, uh, several uh, styles which I use for writing, but for the technical paper, uh, what one looks for immediately is uh, clarity. Uh, very concise language and an immediate understanding of the problem that you are going to be putting across in your paper. So, uh, that is what uh, creates the very first impression, a clarity of statement. Now, I have here uh, an example from uh, one of the papers. Now, uh, I hope it is uh, legible from your centers. Learning languages through technology mirrors the sources behind it. The technical, the technological equipments start its teaching with listening. Now, uh, this particular uh, statement, I am sure you will, uh, you will realize that it's, it's a little difficult to understand what the uh, writer wants to say. So, please uh, try to state your problem. Uh, with absolute clarity, you do not have to use very difficult words. S start use very, very simple language and state your uh, problem immediately. Use concise sentences which are very short and meaningful and come to the point immediately. Please do not repeat ideas and uh, avoid verbosity. I am going to be giving uh, examples for all these, again taken from your papers. So, I will uh, go to the next one. Uh, this is a slide from uh, Sahana actually and she has uh, uh, given examples here again. Uh, you have a certain uh, statement uh, here which you, uh, most people have used this kind of writing. It can be ascertained from the t-test that the performance etcetera, etcetera. But on the other side, you have a statement which is very clear. It, you do not, uh, most important thing is it is in the active voice as you will, I will be talking about the voice later on. But let me bring it to your notice here that it is in the active voice, which immediately creates an impression that uh, the writer has, uh, you know, uh, done this particular research and he is not quoting somebody else. Then again, uh, we will come to clarity. Uh, I have talked about this in the very first slide also. I have a segment from a paper here and it is, it was a very difficult, you know, uh, piece in terms of language, in terms of clarity, in terms of writing style, in terms of various elements that are found in a lot of, I um, will put it in quotes, Indian writing. I will be talking about that in a little more detail a little later on, but uh, I would request you all to read this uh, piece of uh, writing and think about it and think about what the writer has uh, done or not done here and uh, maybe we will come back to it a little later on. I have a yet another piece here. Uh, this piece I have tried to correct. Uh, the letters in red are my corrections. Again, this is an example of uh, a lot of verbosity. There is no clarity and this is almost, I think, the second paragraph of the paper. 
So, when I am reading this as a referee, I have to literally hunt for what the writer wants to say, what, what is the problem that he or she is going to tackle in uh, the paper. And now, uh, the third one, uh, the third example that I have, there are problems in this uh, paragraph as well. I have uh, highlighted the problems uh, in red. But I want to think, I want you to think about this paragraph in the sense that uh, this is one uh, paragraph uh, with the exception of the portions marked in red. I believe that it is coming to the problem almost immediately. They are very straight, they are you know uh, attacking the problem directly and they are presenting their uh, statement of purpose very clearly in this. This is the abstract and uh, this is the kind of uh, you know statement of purpose that a referee is looking for. Uh, there are problems in uh, uh, the writing, uh, for example, to enhance cooperations in learning. I will be talking about the uh, use of apostrophe a little later on, but I would like you to know that cooperation is an abstract noun and it is not used in the plural anywhere. Uh, which I expect the uh, writer wanted to use uh, this uh, word as. Now, when we come to grammatical rules, uh, most of us have learnt English grammar in school. I am not going to give you a lesson in grammar right now, but there are some very uh, you know obvious uh, things that you should know. For example, this is this is a very basic. Uh, element that, that recurs in almost, I think it has recurred in almost all the papers that I have read, that is the use of capital letters in the middle of sentences. As, uh, as it says in this uh, example, uh, it has given to some very unintended meaning. Uh, I have tried to make a correction here, uh, instead of saying as it is evident, effective teaching is not possible without appropriate aids. Uh, as you must have realized, this was a paper on uh, teaching aids and uh, I have tried to make a correction here and also the use of comma here, uh, it sort of uh, divides the sentence and focuses on what is the main purpose of the sentence. Uh, I had said I would be coming back to a voice a little later on. Now, uh, these are uh, examples again provided by Sahana and I think she has also taken them from uh, your papers. Uh, what you have on the left side are statements in uh, the passive voice. It uh, puts off the referee immediately, you know, when the writer, uh, you know, reports his uh, activities in the passive voice. Instead, please use a straightforward active voice and that sort of makes it very, very straight. There is no confusion, there is uh, absolutely uh, no abstraction anywhere. The uh, reader uh, gets to the point immediately. If you can uh, look at all the use, you will uh, see the difference between uh, the examples on the uh, left. This is another very major I would say it is part of the Indian writing style, I think. There is uh, the agreement of the singular and the plural. I have given an example here. Technology helps listening to play an effective role in the lives of the pupil. Pupil, singular, lives, plural. Now, I am sure the uh, uh, writer of this piece uh, did not mean to do this happens. It happens so often that it, it has become a habit and uh, I am sure the live audience also uh, realizes that uh, people do uh, make this mistake all the time. So, please just check whether your uh, singular and plurals match. This is another big gray area. What tense do you use when you are writing? Uh, again, I am going to uh, point out that it is a very Indian uh, uh, problem using the continuous present tense. Even when we are talking, 
we say we use ing for everything i am having a house i am having a class you know that's a very common way of speaking in in india but just make sure that you are not doing it when you are writing a paper it has a very uh, off putting effect on the ref day i've tried to make corrections here now i'll go back to the first statement the industrial development of nations in recent years recent years very clearly means the past leads to global warming and other environmental issues the writer is again confusing tenses here very clearly the problems of global warming and energy exhaustion leads what is the problem here of singular and plural to the use of renewable energy sources such as wind solar tidal etc so please be very careful about the tenses that you are using stick to one tense uh, normally the work that you have already done and that uh, you wish to present is to be referred to in the past tense and what you wish to do in the future will obviously come in the future tense uh, this is another problem that i have found in uh, many papers i wouldn't say almost all but many papers uh, i think this is a problem uh, that comes about because of uh, studying maybe up to the 10th standard and once in the local language and uh, also the tendency to think in uh, one's mother tongue and what happens when you think in your mother tongue and translate it into english it's absolute chaos that's all i can say uh, for example this uh, sentence many researchers are breaking their brains in introducing new methods to technology but using of technology depends upon the attitude of the users what does this mean are breaking their brains i'm sure somebody has translated this straight from hindi or whatever the local language is sar phodna the second uh, sentence as well continuing on these researches we could make the living standards of disabled persons go high raise the living standards of disabled people go high i i think uh, it must be var uh, nene in marathi i think this is a paper from maharashtra so again a translation from uh, the local language so do think about what you are writing when you are translating from your mother tongue into english because referee who does not know your mother tongue is reading it he doesn't understand what you are trying to say now uh, there is a tendency to you know uh, use very long sentences i've tried to do here break up long sentences the reader gets bored if there is too much information in one sentence and it just goes on and on and on and on and how do you break up long sentences if there are too many ideas in a sentence just break it up into separate sentences or uh, if there is a, a primary idea in the first part and you want to continue with the idea in the second part use a semicolon start uh, the next idea or you can use commas very few people use commas in india i have tried to uh, show it in my previous examples using a comma at very strategic places gives you uh, gives a separation between ideas and a sort of a process follows in the sentence there's a process of ideas and that is missing when you are when you don't have commas now the use of apostrophe now this is a problem that i mean everybody has everybody has this problem i gave an example of cooperations earlier this is uh, here the uh, reader is trying to use it as a plural form but a plural form will never ever take an apostrophe um, and it is uh, when you are using it in the uh, possessive case it is used only for living uh, entities for example the dog's tail the girl's dress or the girl's book but you can never ever say the table's leg because the table is not a living entity now uh, please please be very careful when you are using these words in you know uh, when you are trying to use its for it apostrophe s or there or there because this is this is the point where their mistakes can happen and they do happen all the time 
And uh, one way uh, of uh, avoiding uh, these mistakes is use a dictionary, use a simple grammar book, you know, and try to find out where exactly these words are used. I am not going to give a lesson in grammar at this point, but please do go back to your high school grammar. These things are very uh, clearly explained in uh, high school grammar books. And it is a very big uh, uh, problem that is, uh, that happens in almost everybody's case. It can, it can happen as an oversight, it can happen as a, a matter of ignorance. So, please uh, clear uh, your doubts in these cases. Uh, now, I am going to be in the advice mode. Uh, please do avoid any kind of slang. Uh, we find that uh, there is a invasion of the SMS lingo, as one calls it, in uh, everyday language. There are a lot of people who even write paragraphs in, those, in that uh, lingo. So, please, please refrain from uh, using any kind of slang uh, in your technical papers. These are serious papers. You want people to read them uh, seriously. And uh, if you use this, uh, if you use any kind of slang, what happens is exactly the opposite. The person, the referee will not take the matter seriously at all and always use formal language for uh, a formal technical paper. I would uh, request all of you to, uh, you know, indulge in some very, very stringent proofreading. These are uh, paragraphs from your papers. And for example, the second one appears almost at the very beginning. This is in the abstract. A fully functional hearts have been also developed. What do you want the referee to think about your paper? A fully functional, a singular, hearts plural, have plural. A fully functional heart has been also developed. That is the correct uh, way to use it. Following are the steps in it. In what? Contrast, intensification, smoothing, and image sharpening, no space, image restoration attempts to restore images. As I see it, I would probably put a colon here, following other steps in it. Contrast, intensification, smoothing, and image sharpening, full stop, space, and then the next sentence starts, image restoration attempts to restore images. So, please do uh, get somebody to proofread, because uh, very often when you have spent a long time writing a certain paper, you uh, feel, I mean you feel that everything is okay, I have read it so many times, there are no problems, there are no mistakes, but do give it to somebody else, a friend of yours and tell him to be absolutely critical and look at it with the eyes of a totally first time reader. That will uh, help. Uh, you know, bring out these, I would call these oversights. These are not uh, problems in your writing style or language or anything. These are purely oversights, but these form a certain effect upon the uh, referee. So, please do uh, give your paper for proofreading. Again, this is another case of lack of proofreading. The sentence, the uh, excerpt in red is incomplete. If you read it, you will find that there is no verb that gives it the reason to be. The development of a numerical model to estimate heat transfer coefficient, compare and analyze the performance of four types of segment designs of seven seg segment plasma torch. I assume that this is the intention of the uh, paper writer, but he has not said anywhere that this is his intention. So, Perhaps a small uh, addition here at the beginning. The intention of the paper is the development of a numerical model to estimate heat transfer, etcetera, etcetera. That immediately makes it very clear to the reader what the writer is talking about. Again, there is another uh, excerpt here which is incomplete. Some argument about where image processing ends and fields such as image analysis and computer vision starts. This almost looks like a bullet point. This looks like a point which presenter would use to uh, use during his presentation. So, 
you do need to make some clarification at the beginning. So, you ought to say here that in this paper, there will be some argument about where image processing ends and fields such as image analysis and computer vision start. This is a request from my site. Please, please, please use a dictionary to understand the meanings of the words that you are using. In all your papers, these I'm just these are just examples that uh, uh, from your uh, papers, and they have been, for example, confirm means something totally different from confirm, and yet we have had a number of people asking us to confirm their registration. I request you all to please go back and look up the dictionary and look at the meaning of confirm. It's totally different from confirm, which is what you want to use in this context. Effect, effect. Again, effect is a verb, effect is a noun. There is a difference. So, you will have to go back to the dictionary and check whether you are using the word properly. And it uh, happens in the uh, case of the third example as well. Uh, very often, the uh, writer wants to say W H E T H E R, whether I will be confirmed, but he uses W E A T H E R, which is the climatic condition. Now, another uh, problem that we come across is the language that the variety of English that one should use in the paper. Some papers ask for US English, some papers ask for UK English, Your uh, the word processor that you use gives you uh, different uh, choices. You can use any one, but please, please do not shift from one another, stay, in, stay very, very consistent, because the shifting from US English to UK English and back and forth, it just irritates the referee. You are using LIZE in one case and LISE in the other case a few sentences down the uh, uh, paragraph, it just sticks out, it irritates. Another piece of advice that I would give you is avoid short forms in a technical paper. It is an absolute no-no. When you are using A and D and to use this symbol as a short form, it is just a no-no. You cannot, you cannot do this in a formal technical paper. Comp, sci comp, comp science department with reference to, these are things that you should avoid. Avoid short forms. Again, they give an air of casualness to your paper, which acts against the serious work that you may have done. So, please avoid that. And uh, these are very common mistakes. At least is not one word. It is two words. All right. These are mistakes that all of us make all the time, but we have to learn not to make these mistakes by looking, up, looking them up in the dictionary and trying not to uh, use them. And uh, as I said, uh, onto is two words, up to is two words, but into is one word. Um, there are several, several uh, uh, websites which have uh, lists of the common mistakes that people make while reading and while writing. So, please do uh, look up uh, the uh, uh, internet for uh, the common mistakes that you may uh, have been making in the past and uh, uh, try to uh, avoid these mistakes. Uh, one thing I must say here is that uh, these days uh, you have almost everything available on the internet. So, please do make uh, very good use of the internet. Uh, you have solutions to almost everything. Uh, these are uh, some uh, useful uh, resources. Uh, the elements of style is almost like a Bible for uh, any uh, person interested in uh, writing. Uh, it, is a, it is an extremely old book and has come up with several reprints and uh, it is a worthwhile uh, investment to have uh, this uh, book by your side when you are writing. And then I have a, um, a 
list of other uh, manuals, the MLA handbook for writers of research papers. Uh, this uh, style sheet is normally used by uh, writers uh, from uh, the uh, humanities and also the Chicago manuals of style. This is again a bible for uh, writers. You have the Oxford dictionary on online, so you can uh, while you are writing, you can easily check up a word if you are stuck somewhere and then uh, you have the IEEE.org uh, that again is a very, very uh, useful uh, resource. And uh, the last one is an online uh, uh, writing uh, workshop. It is uh, run by the uh, University of Purdue and I would say it is an extremely useful uh, resource to uh, anybody who wishes to improve their uh, writing style and I would definitely uh, urge you to look at all these uh, and uh, go back to you go back to what you have written and look at it very closely and uh, come up with uh, solutions to uh, the problems that you think you might have made during writing obviously uh, this was not a class in grammar or uh, language but uh, i have tried to cover uh, the more uh, common mistakes that uh, i have come across as a uh, referee of uh, technical papers and uh, if uh, you have any questions or queries maybe we could uh, handle them on Moodle. Thank you very much.